Welcome to your Wellcast, a guide to unlocking a healthier, happier you. Your host, Anna Kate, is an experienced holistic health and wellness coach. She's the guide by your side as you give yourself permission to build the life you envision, empowering you through motivation, education, and whole health nourishment. If you're ready to indulge in your wellness journey, Anna's here to help. This is your Wellcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to your Wellcast. We are going to talk about a topic that most know to be innately true, but for some reason find it really hard to accept. There is this dichotomy in today's world, the polarities between such sacrificial ways of living that this concept isn't even really an option to the absurdity that one believes this only from an ego-driven and materialistic level and never really goes deeper within the basis of what it could truly mean in humility. And that topic is the idea that you deserve to be happy. Again, you deserve to be happy. We often find ourselves caught in this never-ending cycle of, I should, I have to, and we're constantly juggling tasks, responsibilities, and obligations. But how much time and energy are we dedicating to a positive, uplifting, and joyful living? It's time to break free from this pattern and to give ourselves the permission to fulfill our dreams Think about it for a moment. You have a chance to live your life story, to really live it from this point on, to embrace the joy that often takes a backseat to obligation. Where has then this been conditioned in your life? Where do you find yourself pushing back your happiness For what other priorities fall before that? We'll explore ways today to prioritize joy, to share stories of transformation, and discuss how a shift in focus can lead to a happier, more fulfilling life. So really choosing happiness. Let's talk about the power of choice when it does come to the idea of happiness. Happiness isn't something that just happens. It doesn't just happen to us by chance. It's a conscious decision. Over and over and over, we're making these decisions within our days that create weeks, which create months and years, right? So it's about waking up with a smile on your face, a sound mind, and knowing that you can handle what the day might bring. And thus, going to bed with a sense of accomplishment, of joy, of really understanding what it was in your day that led to happiness, that led to frustration, that led to any celebration, or the idea that what could I have done better? Life will always throw us curveballs, and there will be moments of both happiness and sorrow. We can't really ever get away from that. I think sometimes we can, we think we can, <laughs> push it down, run away. But with more wisdom, you do understand that that isn't the reality. We all have that line of homeostasis, right? Like imagine that one straight line. That is your homeostasis point. But whether it be waves or obvious peaks and valleys across that line of homeostasis, that is the commonality for all of us. So the key is to analyze your days from a ratio standpoint. Imagine that every day is a blank canvas and that you get to paint it with joy and positivity. There will always be that stuff that upsets you, you don't agree with, things you may not understand. But by taking a step back, it gives you that space. Space to see that there's 
also always an abundance of joy to be found. It's up to you to choose that happiness. And we can also find joy in the challenges. Let's explore what it means to find joy in the challenges that we face. Now, this isn't a serious example, but I want you to imagine it correlating to any circumstance you've encountered or you are currently experiencing today, okay? It's the idea of the runner's high. Have you ever experienced a runner's high? It's the exhilarating feeling when you push through a tough run and find that bliss and fortitude on the other side right? Personal story for me, it was the effort. When I look back on the days of running in particular, now again, this could be any example in your life, it was and probably still is always about the effort. It was that knowing inside, that really, that that innate knowing that got me to the level that I knew from my body and from my mind, I could handle this. It was pushing enough to that edge. It was chasing the seven 30 minute miles for those 13 miles in those races. That is the thing that created just enough struggle, uneasiness, discomfort that really truly resulted in a worthwhile effort creating a more beautiful me from the inside out. And so testing yourself most often leads to that celebration. You are and can do more than you know. Trust that about yourself. Life is full of challenges. And some of the most rewarding experiences come from overcoming them. We all have our equivalent to a runner's high, or a couple of them, right? Something that challenges us and brings us immense joy. So I encourage you, I encourage you today to reflect on what that is for you in your own life. Share your stories and experiences with others about this because it helps inspire another person to really find joy in the challenges. There's enough of the negativity of the confusion around us. Let's try and bring about some compassion, some joy, and some help to others. And to me, this is the most important segment, in my opinion. It's all about giving yourself the permission, period, point blank. Give yourself the permission slip to do the things that light you up, that bring you peace. It is about asserting yourself in your own story and not always putting others first. When you do this, it's not selfish. It's truly caring for yourself. Of course, It is the unspoken rule (laughs) that it doesn't mean abuse the scenarios or only put yourself first from an egotistical perspective, but it does mean that you are actually deserving of some time in which you place your energy where you most need it, where you most want it, and all of that is simply in order for you to flourish. You deserve to be a central character in your own story. And by asserting yourself and pursuing your own happiness, you actually create a more efficient and harmonious world. It's like everyone finding their own unique lane and letting the universe and the universe's design to really play out. When you stop people-pleasing and begin to prioritize your own well-being, It actually allows everyone else to do what they're supposed to do best. And thus, the ripple effect, we all work better together. Allow for the natural design to play out. Stop overstepping. Stop the people pleasing. Stop trying to fix things for other people all the time. 
when we stay in our own lane from a place of service, from a place of gratitude, and from a place of harmony, we all will begin to dance better together. I have a little activity for you. I heard this from Liz Tran. She is an author and a coach that I uh, deeply resonate with. So I want you to go ahead and set a timer for three minutes, okay? And simply write out on a piece of paper every activity that brings you joy, big or small, work, play, home life, any tiny thing you enjoy doing regularly. And the list will be different for everyone. Write it all out in those three minutes, everything that comes to mind. Then go to your calendar and implement. Where in your week can you fit in these specific activities? Is it within your morning routine? On a break from work? Remember to take breaks at work. (laughs) Before the workday is done, what are a couple things that you could put into your calendar that take two seconds? Texting a best friend you haven't talked to for a while. After dinner, go for a walk around the block. Listen to a favorite song, right? The tiniest of tiny actions that bring you joy are the things that will build consistently over time. And then that creates the decisions and the overall happiness that we talked about at the beginning. The baby steps transcend into larger decisions that actually start to transform your life. When you're choosing happiness, you become more vibrant and strong in your day-to-day. Make the space for what it is that puts a smile on your face. Please do this. I'm sending you the energy of positivity to do this exercise with abundance in mind. Again, make space for what it is that puts a smile on your face. The more you choose blissful, small steps that ground you each day, you are in fact living life as the person you came here to be. And as we wrap, I want you to remember again for the millionth time that you deserve to be happy. You're worthy of happiness in your life. It's not a privilege. It's a right. Many are not so lucky. So choose. Choose to prioritize joy. Choose happiness where you can. Find bliss in the challenges and assert yourself in your story. See your reality for what it is And then choose to up-level. When you do, not only will you be happier, but you'll also create a more harmonious world where everyone can flourish. Thank you again for tuning into your Wellcast. If you did find this episode inspiring, consider subscribing and sharing it with your family and friends. I thank you. Until next time, be you, love them. XO. Thanks for listening to Your Wellcast, a guide to unlocking a healthier, happier you. Keep in touch on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Anna Kate underscore Whole Health. To get in touch with Anna for personalized coaching and guidance, visit AnnaKateHealthCoach.com.